Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today's tutorial is for a beautiful peplum top. The vibe for this one was modern slash feminine. So we've got a double band with clashing geometry and puffiness from a trinity body. The perfect make, modern with a dash of feminine. Speaking of, if you're looking for your perfect make, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of classic and modern crochet tutorials and patterns, from bikinis and cover-ups to tank tops and tees with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work but I used a total of 355 grams of yarn, and that's 750 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a five and six millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us a fruit you never get tired of eating. I love fruit, so there's quite a few, but my number one would have to be dragon fruit details for the giveaway down below. We are using five stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and trinity stitch. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of our chest detail to be. I'd like for mine to be just about 3.5 inches or 9 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 15. Now that we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain three. That chain three does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And now we're going to prepare for a double crochet, so yarn over. So into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two for our first double crochet. Let's do one more, yarn over, into that following chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Continue with one double crochet into every chain. We are now at the end of our row one. So getting started on a row two, we're all going to chain three and flip our work because it's going to be more double crochets. So all we're going to do is yarn over, find that first stitch from our previous row and insert in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us to get some ribbing. Pull through two, pull through two. Again, yarn over, into that next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And from here, continue with one back loop double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're all going to chain three, flip our work, and put one back loop double crochet into every stitch again. We're going to continue to repeat our back loop double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we have a portion that can stretch around the widest part of our bust, making sure that we end on an even number of rows. When we have that, I will meet you back. I am back. I have a total of 50 rows. My length is now 24 and a half inches or 62 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to seam everything together. So let's all start by folding our band in half and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through, and start by finding that first stitch into the front panel. So we're going to insert and then into the back panel, insert into that first stitch as well and single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. First stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet. And continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now that our seam is all finished, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom of our band. So what we're all going to do is chain one, and flip our work over so that now the seam is along the inside. 
and all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop with one single crochet and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Again, into that following side row, find the top loop with one single crochet and then a second single crochet into the same top loop. Now we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. And just as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this piece can stretch. So once when you have slip stitched into that chain space, make sure you try your piece on to make sure that everything fits correctly. If it's a little bit too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. But either way, I will meet you guys back. I am back and my single crochet row is all finished up. Now from here, we're going to get started on the bottom portion of our piece. So what we're going to do is switch out to our six millimeter hook. We're all going to start by making an odd number of chains, the length that we'd like for the entirety of the top to be, making sure that we're placing the band right underneath our underarm. I need a total of 10 inches or 25 centimeters. So I'm going to make a chain 41. And now that we have our chain, we can get started on our first Trinity stitch row. So we're all going to start off by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, we're going to insert with a single crochet. So insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and that's going to be how the first trinity stitch always starts off. Now from here, we're going to insert our hook into that same chain that our single crochet is in to pull up a loop. So into this chain right here, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and we should all have two loops on our hook and we need a total of four loops. So into the following two chains as well, we're going to pull up a loop. So into that next chain, I'm going to insert, pull through for three loops, and then into that following chain, insert, pull through for four loops. Then we're all going to yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and gently do a chain one to finish off our Trinity stitch. We do want to make sure that we're using a medium to loose grip when we're doing our Trinity stitches. So let's get started on our second. We're all going to start by inserting our hook into that last chain that our previous Trinity stitch has worked into. So it will be occupied. So into that chain, insert, pull through, and we need to pull up four loops again. So into that following chain, pull through, and then into the chain right after that, yarn over, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then like the previous one, yarn over, pull through all four and chain one to finish off this Trinity stitch. Let's just do one more a little bit quicker. Into the last stitch that our previous Trinity stitch has worked into, pull through for two loops, into the following chain, pull through for three loops, and then into that following chain as well, pull through for four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and we're going to continue to do this Trinity stitch until we all have two chains left. We've made our way all the way down and we should all have two chains left. There's one, there's two. Now we're going to do our last Trinity stitch. So it's going to start off the same way as all of our other ones. So just to get it started, we're going to insert our hook into that same last chain that our previous Trinity stitch has worked into, pull through into that following chain, which is the second to last, insert and pull through, and then into that last chain, pull through for four loops on our hook. We are still going to yarn over, pull through all four, but only for the last one, instead of doing a chain after that pull through four, we're just going to single crochet into that same last chain. So it will be occupied and just single crochet once. And now that we have that, we're ready to connect it into the base. So let's all start by finding that next available stitch into the base. We're going to insert our hook, pull through everything. And now our row one is complete. Now to work our way up to the following row, we're going to need to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. None of these slip stitches count as a stitch. Flip our work. The first one is always going to start with a single crochet. So into the last stitch from our previous row, not counting any of those slip stitches, we are going to insert our hook into that stitch with a single crochet. Then we're going to insert our hook into the same stitch that our single crochet is in, into the following stitch and into the stitch right after that as well. Again, for a total of four loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and let's get started on the next. So into that last stitch that our previous Trinity stitch has worked into, pull through into the following, 
pull through into the following, pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and do a chain one to finish off this trinity stitch. We're going to continue this, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. Now that we have two stitches left, let's do the last one together just once more. So getting started on this, we're all going to insert our hook into that last stitch that our previous trinity stitch has worked into, pull through, into that following, which is the second to last, and then into the following, which is our last, yarn over, pull through all four, and then for the last one only, single crochet into that same last stitch. Now from here, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and then do our trinity stitch all the way back down, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. So we've made our way all the way back down with our first one, two, three rows. Now we're going to connect it into the base. Now since we want a ruffle for the bottom of our piece, we're going to start by inserting our hook into the same stitch that our previous row was worked into, so that last stitch will be occupied. So to connect this row, insert your hook into that same stitch with a slip stitch, still doesn't count as a stitch, and then to work our way up to the following row, just slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, still does not count as a stitch, flip our work, and then repeat. And from here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did to ensure that we get our ruffle, making our way all the way around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. We are back, and we've made our way all the way around with our Trinity Stitch rows. We're ready to seam everything together, so let's all make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams are along the outside now, and then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now we're all going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Now just like the first seam that we did, we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, first stitch into the back panel, and single crochet everything together, and that's basically it. Continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chainable one and cut, and then I'll meet you back. So the bottom of our piece is all seamed up. The next thing we're going to do is the collar. So first things first, we're going to need to single crochet across the top. So that's going to be done pretty much the same way that we single crocheted across the bottom of our band. So now insert our five millimeter hook into any side row, and then put two single crochets into every side row. Then once we made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then do a chain up one and cut. So now that our single crochet row is all finished up, the next thing we're going to have to do is insert our stitch markers where we want the edge of our collar to be. So that's going to be pretty simple. We just want to make sure that we have an even number of stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker. And when that even number is divided in half, we want to make sure that that number is an odd number. So as an example, I have a total of 26 stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker. 26 divided in half is 13, so I am good. Now just as an example, say if you have 24 stitches in between your stitch markers, 24 divided in half is 12, go ahead and add two stitches or subtract two stitches to get the proper numbers that we need. We're going to be doing that within the front and the back panel, and we do want to make sure that our underarms are going to have the same amount of stitches as well. So just make sure that everything is nice and even, and once we have that finished up, we can get started on our collar. So getting started on our collar, we're all going to insert our five millimeter hook again into any one of our stitch marker stitches. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, then we're all going to make an even number chain the height that we'd like for our collar to be. Now I'd like for mine to be roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain ten. So now that we have our chain, we're all going to get started on our first row. So we're all going to block off that last chain and start with a chain two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. We're all going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet, and then half double crochet into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Then put one half double crochet into half the amount of chains that we made. So since I made a chain ten, I will be doing five half double crochets. Now that I have my five half double crochets, now put one double crochet into each of the rest of our chains. So for me, that's going to be another five double crochets. Now we're at the end of our row one. We're starting with the shoulder portion first. So from where we're at, let's all chain three, flip our work, and then we're going to start with our double crochets now since we are technically along the bottom. So now put one back loop double crochets for the same amount of double crochets that we did for the previous row. So for me, five back loop double crochets. 
And now that my five back loop doubles are finished, finish off the row with back loop half doubles. So again, another five back loop half doubles. And now that these two rows are finished, we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows, making sure that every row is within the back loops now, until we all have a shoulder portion that can reach up and over our shoulder and reach the stitch marker within the other panel. I will meet you guys back right after we have an odd number of rows. I am back with the shoulder portion of my collar. I have a total of 17 rows, and the width that I have along the outer edge is roughly 8.5 inches or 22 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to connect it into our stitch marker stitch within the other panel. So since we all should have ended right after the double crochet portion of our row, which is along the bottom, we're just going to slip stitch into the stitch marker stitch within the other panel. So insert, pull through everything on our hook. That's to connect it and also halfway to work our way up to the following row. So now we're going to be slip stitching into that following stitch into the base as well to work our way up to the following row. And now we're going to flip our work and then repeat our rows. So now that our work is flipped, since we are along the bottom, we're going to start with our back loop double crochets. So put one back loop double crochet for half the amount of chains that we made. So for me, another five since we aren't doing any increases or decreases. And now that our double crochets are finished, finish off the row with our back loop half double crochets. At the end of the row, we're all going to chain two, flip our work, and then start the following row with our back loop half double crochets. Finish off the row with our back loop double crochets, and then I will meet you back at the base so that we can connect it together. So we've just made our way all the way back down with our second row that's connected into the panel, and now we're just gonna connect it together. So we're all gonna start by counting up the next two available stitches. There's one, and there's two. Now into that second stitch, insert your hook into there with a slip stitch. The slip stitch does not count as a stitch. And then to work our way up to the following row, we're going to slip stitch up the following two stitches as well. So there's one, and then there's two. Those also don't count as stitches. And now from here, we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we reach our following stitch marker stitch. And then I will meet you back so we can do the other shoulder portion together. Now we have made our way all the way across from stitch marker to stitch marker. Now from here, we all should have ended along the top, so right after the half double crochet section. And from here, we just get to repeat the same thing that we did when we got started with the shoulder. So chain two, flip our work, our back loop half doubles, back loop doubles, then at the end of that row, chain three, flip our work, and then starting with our back loop doubles, ending off that row with our back loop half doubles. We're gonna continue on to repeat those two rows for the same amount of shoulder rows that we had for the first portion. So for me, an additional 17 rows, and then I'll meet you back just to remind you how we're gonna connect it into the base within the other panel as well. So I am back and I have my second shoulder portion all finished up. Now all we're gonna do from here is connect it into the other panel and then repeat the same thing that we just did here. So let's flip our work over. Now we all should have ended along the bottom. Now from here, we're going to insert our hook into that stitch marker stitch with a slip stitch, so the same way we did the other panel. And then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch flip our work, and then repeat. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat these rows, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we did for the other panel, and I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left to work into so we can seam everything together. We are back. We've made our way all the way down until we reached our following stitch marker stitch, and now we're just going to seam it all together. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out. Then we're all going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and this is going to be the same seam as everything else. So start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, first stitch into the back panel, and single crochet everything together. And we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. And that's it, we are all finished. Now the last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.